Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Place of Binding of Isaac Plus. Last time we were on 10 wins. 10 wins in a row. We're starting to get there. That's five days. Is this a hat or hair? We'll never know. FQFG SAR Zero. I would like it if there were zero SARS on planet Earth. You know, I never even thought about SARS in like 15 years. SARS still around? Wikipedia is not talking about it in the past tense. In late 2017, Chinese scientists traced the virus to cave-dwelling horseshoe bats in the Yunnan province. I knew it. I never trusted cave-dwelling horseshoe bats in the Yunnan province. And people said, NL, that's not fair. That's a little bit offensive. The bats have never done anything to you. And I said, just you wait. I said, just you wait. And as always, I've been proven right. You can't trust a cave-dwelling bat in the Yunnan province, Ruka. My cat is right next to me. I wouldn't... I don't need to pretend to talk to my cat. My cat is always here. Did you see that picture? Um, I saw it on Twitter. It was like, in Russia, when you have anxiety about something foreboding, a common... Uh, bit of imagery for it is like this cat in the doorway and it's just an enormous cat looking at you as you agonize at your desk over something. It's like, that's this cat while I record Isaac. Like, yeah, what do you, hello, hi, what would you like? You're the one who barged in here. I, you can't have my chair, okay? That's just ridiculous. This chair costs, get that off the screen. This chair costs more than your existence. Now, I would much rather throw the tra the chair in the trash than throw you in the trash. I have an emo emotional attachment to you. I just have a spino attachment to my chair. That being said, this chair is for me. When you pay for the chair, you can sit in the chair. But I, the old DX racer has a little box in it. If you want to go sit in that box, please, by all means. That's what it's there for. You can't sit in my chair. It's my chair. Hey, yeah, I love you too. Okay, gulp. I don't know if we had a trinket because I always forget to look at it. What I do know is that so far this run seems pretty acceptable. I know we can get a free charge on Black Hole. Um, it's relatively bereft of meaning is the way that I would describe it at the present moment. But this run is extremely... Uh, safe so far. I wouldn't call it a guaranteed win. Excuse me, I got sucked into my own black hole because of a weird collision effect. <laughs> sure hope somebody got fired for that blunder. I would be fired. For, I'm the most likely to be fired for that blunder. Definitely not a guaranteed win, but all of our stats are above average except maybe speed, but it's not in a bad spot and luck, but luck is like irrelevant. Hello, my son. Why do you always want to be so close to the action? He's rubbing his head on the microphone. It's like the one place you shouldn't be. You hear me? Why not? Here, we can be father and son. Playing games together. Just get in the box. I'll still pet you in the box. Never fear. I'll pet you more in the box because I understand conditioning. If when you're in the box I pet you more, you're more likely to enjoy being in the box. You're going to go to the box in the future. Now you're leaving the box. I have to I have to withhold my pets for the time being. Mmm, tempting room. Let's peep this first. Five room. Very interesting. This turned out to be relatively poor. Speed up is very good. Um, feels like I'm walking on sunshine is actually great because we have a... Uh... Whoop, just get one. Fair enough. Um, because we have the cube of meat. The champion version, like the urine-colored champion version, doesn't make creep, I think. So we're good to go. No problems here. So we probably will use the five room, honestly. I'll just keep looking back. Is my cat in sleep position yet? Nope, it's still in prowl position. Who? I'm taking a little bit more damage than I'd like to have taken this far, thus far. When do you use this? When do you use thus? Now that I think about it, those are two very different words. You know, thus is like, as a result of... This is... I don't even know how to describe this. It's such a ubiquitous word. Alright, now you want to leave? By all means. 
Goodbye. I feel like being a cat in an apartment or a house, you have like one daily duty, and your daily duty is just to ensure as few doors remain closed as possible. They're categorically offended by closed doors. It's the only explanation for their behavior. If there's ever a closed door, they don't want to be inside of the room. You know, what do they want inside of the room? There's no meat liver pellets in there. Might be a cat toy or two, might be a box, but you know, it's not their dream house or anything like that. It's just the fact that a door is closed is what offends them greatly in the first place. I can respect that, you know, cats are a... They're an animal that prioritizes opportunity. Kind of ironic from a creature that sleeps 16 hours a day. This is a rare situation for me where I, I really... There's nothing to ask for here. Whatever we get, we'll probably take to get precedent and because our HP looks good to begin with. Eh, super bandage is fine. Uh, okay, well, actually, our deal with the devil is kind of trashed here. Which is fine, we can absorb a trashed here deal right now. We gulped again. Again, I can't remember if we had a... Oh, I can't remember if we had a... A trinket at the moment. I don't think we did. Now, we do want to hit the five room. I think I know where we are. We want to hit the shop as well, because we could actually get an arcade and maybe even get another deal with the devil chance. So we probably will peep those. This is our shop. I don't mind getting amnesia on a small floor. It's when it's on a large floor that things become, you know, problematic for us. Box of Friends is, is truly awful. For our current situation. Maybe a second secret room here and then we're done. Strength. I just wanted a single coin, but you know what? Sure. No arcade on the next floor. Life goes on. Gonna work our way over to the five room. We're gonna be a little bit behind schedule, but you know, I've been doing boss rush a lot less lately. It's not because I want to do less boss rush, but I think anytime you find yourself, yeah, we won like 40 runs in a row. I can't remember what our streak ended at. Um, and we lost it in what I would describe as an honest fashion. You know, we lost it by being stupid with being a little bit too zany. And then we went on a little bit of a, you know, it was like after your senior year of high school, you know, freshman year of college, you're experimenting a little bit, see what's going on. I pulled myself into the fire there. Um, I didn't do that in my freshman year of college. You may be thinking of the participant in season two of Survivor, Survivor Australia, named Michael, who hunted a pig on the island, scared the crap out of everybody with the fact that he was like a real survivalist and not a hairstylist trying to become famous by being on reality TV. And uh, then passed out due to smoke inhalation, burned himself badly in the fire and for was forced to be airlifted out, paving the way for Susan to win that season. But we all know who really won that season. That's right, it was Elizabeth Hasselbeck who went on to be uh, on The View, despite coming in like fourth. Now, is all of that correct? I don't remember. <laughs> it's been a while. I did watch Survivor. I watched Survivor Season 1. I watched Survivor Season 2. I watched Season 3. I may have even watched Season 4. If you weren't alive in, uh, like, the year 2000 to 2004, there was, like, Survivor Mania. You don't even understand. For Christmas one year, I received, like, the buff. And the only reason I know what it's called is because Survivor was so big. You know, this is the dawn of reality TV when everything was so exciting. And I still think that, you know, Survivor is a pretty cool reality TV show. I also think Big Brother is fine. You know, it was there at the get-go. I understand it's based on the... Dutch version or whatever, but I can get down with those shows. The reality shows with competition that tell an ongoing story, I'm cool with. I, d I dislike the reality shows that exist now, which are simulated shows of people doing their jobs, but with the drama kicked up to 4,000 for no reason whatsoever. It's not American Repairman. Dude with a weird beard is a repairman in America. You don't know what kind of weird refrigerators you're gonna find on the job. 
on American Repairman. I'm like, who's watching this? Oh, it's the biggest show in the world right now. <laughs> Geronimo Curtis works at the dump. He sifts through trash all day long, because remember, one man's trash is another man's treasure. American Trash Man. It's always some dude who's got a weird name. He's like, you know, Cornelius Cloggs. He's got a beard that nobody on earth has worn since the 15th century. And yeah, I'm talking about Jackson Galaxy, the, the so-called Cat Whisperer. I got nothing against him, you know? I thought I'd watch maybe four or five episodes of that show over the course of my life, find it reasonably entertaining. But your name is Jackson Galaxy. You got a beard that looks like the Quake logo. It's okay, you know, it takes different strokes to rule the world. Run the run the world takes different strokes. Different stroke to move the world, that's right. Been a long time. All I'm saying is every single one of those shows follows like the same archetype. I was into the cooking shows for a while. You know, the cooking reality TV shows, you've seen them. Chopped. Cutthroat Kitchen. They're the same show. It's, it's the same thing every time. I forget, it was it, it might have been Don't Think Twice, the movie. Um, there was a bit about uh, being on those shows. Like on, on Chopped, it's always like, Hey, my name's Damien Crescendo. I run a food truck out of Portland, Oregon. And then they're like, I want to win the money because an asteroid crashed into my house two years ago. And, you know, things haven't been the same since. And the next person gets up and is like, Yeah, well, a black hole opened up in my dryer when I was 11. And then it's just like, okay, I get it. I get the. It's not that I think that the people should diminish their sad stories. It's just that I, I've become cynical to the formula because I've sniffed it out, you know? I don't, I don't blame the contestants, I blame the producers who are like, tell me about the most traumatic event that's ever happened in your life. And you're like, oh, the curse die! How could you? Hey, I'm Damien Crescendo. I picked up curse die thanks to Curse of the Unknown. Life's never been the same since. And the same on Chop, they always give them, you know, oh, you may open your ingredient basket. And they open it up and it's like, chicken legs, poison, cornflakes and ice cream and then you're like is he gonna make a coolie is he gonna make a chicken leg coolie i've decided to make a disassembled chicken leg coolie you're like i got i, I knew it i got you cutthroat kitchen is even weirder because cutthroat kitchen is like you know you got to grab the ingredients from the kitchen they tell you like you got 40 minutes to make your best fried chicken and then they go into the kitchen and inevitably they get they get not the kitchen, sorry, but the pantry. Inevitably, some idiot in like the 45 seconds they're allowed to grab ingredients forgets the actual ingredient. And they always do like the confessional interview and they're like, wouldn't you know it? How am I supposed to make fried chicken without having any chicken? And like, well, you are toast. And then they gotta like, I, I'll never forget the feeling. I've n I haven't had it in like, you know, 15 years. But it's the feeling of having clearly not done your homework, but then your teacher calls on you to explain your homework to the rest of the class, and they gotta do this in front of whatever the judge is on Cutthroat Kitchen. I decided to put my unique spin on this assignment <laughs> and not do it at all. Instead of fried chicken, I made a vegan fried chicken where the chicken is chickpea flour. You know that the judge is like, you forgot the chicken, right? But they can't say it. I don't think they should say it, at least. I haven't experienced that feeling in a long time. I did have it once. Um, in my first programming class. This is 2015, so it was like three years ago. I woke up in a cold sweat, checked the drop box. Tears gone cold, I'm wondering why. Got out of... No, but... Uh, and I realized that for assignment two... I accidentally submitted assignment one all over again. Yo, Egghead was making us not take some damage here. That was pretty good. So I was like freaking out because, you know, my last experience with, with making a mistake like that would have been in high school where you never would have been believed. You know, they would have assumed that it was an elaborate 
uh, set. It was like a the Thomas Crown affair. I'm going back to the shop here. They would have assumed like, oh, I get it. You didn't do the assignment, so you decided what you were going to do in your sneaky little brain was upload the wrong assignment, come into school the next day, tell me that you accidentally uploaded the wrong assignment to get yourself an extra day to work on it. That's what I thought the conversation that was about that, oh my god, that was about to have with this guy was. That's the wrong item. I don't have IV bag anymore. We could take it if we want, but... Instead, I went up to the professor and I was like, hey, I uh, uploaded the wrong file. I was probably like sweating and my voice was, you know, wavering. I was like, I uploaded the wrong file. Is there any way I could like, you know, upload the new file even though we're past the due date? And the dude was just like, yeah, do it. Just upload the new file. I'm not going to mark it for like three days anyway. And I was like, all right, we're all adults here. <laughs> Nobody is in this class unless they want to be in the class. Like there's no... Incentive that you know what my master plan is I'm gonna enroll in this class and then not do any of the work and come up with a series of elaborate excuses to Try to get one over on the professor it just doesn't make any sense, you know? Oh No, it's gonna go on my transcripts. Nobody cares We're all adults here. It's a mutual level of respect and understanding Kids try to get out of stuff like that I've done it before in my life, you know, as in 8th grade. You'd be like, yeah, sorry, I couldn't do the homework last night. Like, my power went out for three minutes. Like, you, your power went out for three minutes? Why didn't you do the assignment in any of the, like, 14 days prior that, I, that it had been assigned? Well, I really had my heart set on starting it in the three minutes, and then the power went out, so what am I supposed to do? It's not my fault. There's nothing I could have done, dude. It's my favorite. I use that all the time now. It's self-aware. It always happens in video games. Whenever I die to a boss, especially in a clearly preventable situation, DUDE, THERE'S NOTHING I COULD HAVE DONE! <laughs> my block was on cooldown, dude! I absolutely love it. Or if I clearly am just bested in a battle royale, must be nice. Mm, must be nice to be better than me at this video game. Because you practice or whatever. The matchmaking's broken. I don't win 80% of my games. Okay, we're getting a little into insufferable territory. It's a good opportunity to take a little step back. Look at the run. And go, uh... How's it going? Well, the... Only bad thing is what I was, you know, perfect opportunity to vignette it right there. The only bad thing, as I see it, is the fact that we have uh, Cursed Eye. Which can be really terrible, but it also gives me a couple of positive things, if I'm being honest. One positive that it gives me is that I have a great excuse to not fight Hush, because fighting Hush with Cursed Eye is a bad idea and also not very fun. You know, we might as well have done it like this. Oh, absolutely. So it is a negative to have it, but it's not like a colossal problem necessarily. Uh, it, this is really close. Demon Baby is almost good enough to take in this situation, but dude, Pyromaniac is definitely better. So we got pretty lucky on that one. This run should be a very comfortable win. If I was diagnosing this right now, I'd be like, we're set. You got nothing to worry about. I don't want to make this an episode about, uh, you know, me not liking TV, because it's not really... We on Dank Depths 1. Okay, so we could put a rush in. I think I will, actually. We'll go to the shop on the next floor. Um, we have not had a deal with the devil, by the way, which is absurd. We have an 81% chance of a deal with the angel. We've had, like, simultaneously deals with the devil that provided us with almost nothing, and then beyond that, not that many opportunities to even get nothing. What a weird setup. Uh, the weird brimstone lasers are just horrendous. Sure, maybe with Cursed Eye they'd be a little bit more interesting. That's an item, it needs like the Hemolacria treatment, to be honest. Like, they need to make that item... It doesn't need to be as good as regular brimstone, but if you want it to be takeable, you gotta give me a little bit more impetus. 
Like, basically, if I insult TV, I'm a hypocrite for a couple of reasons. One, I work hard, but the concept of my content is lazy. It's, it's like a podcast, but I don't even know what I'm going to talk about before I get started, you know? There's not a whole lot of forethought that goes into this. This is 100% an execution. 0% an idea. Mostly, I just show up. <laughs> Every day. I have perfect attendance. That's that's my claim to fame. Um, but then on top of that, I have a cable subscription. And I do watch TV from time to time. But a lot of re reality TV annoys me. The one that annoys me the most is inexplicably wealthy people complaining about very minor problems with their house. Have you seen this show? And you're like, which one? And I'm like, I know. There's a thousand. It's like, you know... This is the oldest joke in the world, but I'm going to repeat it anyway. It's, you know, my husband is an ant farmer, and I recycle plastic bags for a living, and our budget for a household is $9.1 million. And they walk into, like, a mansion, and they're like, hmm, 8,000 square feet. Is that enough for us and our no children? I don't think so. By the way, if you want to know, if you're ever watching Love It, in Love it or Listed, and you're wondering how those people can afford it, it's very simple. Uh, owning property has been a way to clandestinely transfer wealth from generation to generation for millennia. So if you're watching Love It or Listed Vancouver, or it's in San Francisco, Seattle, London, Stockholm, any place like that, basically if you ever see people that have what seem like not that amazing or lucrative jobs, buying a home, there's a couple of different options. Buying a home that costs a ton of money. One of one option is uh, scrimped and saved. Didn't need a bunch of avocado toast, which of course, as we know, is the the big culprit for not being able to buy a house that costs 1.4 million dollars. Um, this is a bunch of pennies, right? It's probably worth buying, but we'd we'd like to be quick if possible. And then uh, the other thing, the and the I would describe this as more likely and not. Unfair, but you know, mom and dad bought a house in 1950 for the price of 12 envelopes, and uh, then they pass it down to their kids, and now they're selling it to upgrade a little bit. And that's fine, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles, I guess. Because we're dealing with that like crazy in Vancouver right now. I bike, every day I bike past this sign that's like, Don't let the government steal your hard-earned savings. This is not a joke, by the way. And then below that, as evidence, I guess, it has a, uh, a table and it says, If your house is worth $8 million or more, you may owe the government $18,000. And I said, They're mad, but I'm like, where do I sign up for that deal? <laughs> I think we should do the Angel Room. More interesting to fight Mega Satan than to probably not even want to do Boss Rush in the first place. Now we could still try to do Boss Rush, but it's, there's not going to be enough time. I was like, man, that's an incredible return on your investment. <laughs> you mean I could buy something, live in it, 40 years later it's worth uh, 74 times what I paid for it, even after adjusting for inflation, and then I can keep it? What an incredible deal. You know when you buy, like, a cup of coffee, you pay 13% sales tax on it. That seems like a smoking deal for an $8 million house. I mean, it's just a starter home, of course. I mean, it's a house that costs as much as, you know, a superstar NHL player's salary for one season. Just, just a kind of beachfront property overlooking the literal Pacific Ocean in a major urban center. You know, it's just... just can't believe they're trying to rip your life savings away. Anyway, we're like, we're getting a little political here. It just... <laughs> I find it... I run the numbers in my head every time I go by, and I just want to knock on the door and be like, I'll pay the tax. But when you die, which I hope is not for a long time, just give me the house. Does that sound like a sick deal? You can continue to live in the house. You're, especially if the mortgage is already paid, it's a fantastic deal. I'll cover the tax for you out of the goodness of my heart. And then, you know, if the unthinkable happens, you just give it to me. Because that's because it, it seems like you're mad. And I would like to make the situation less mad if possible. See, I don't want the property to be, property to be uh, 
insanely cheap. I just want it to be insanely cheap for me. <laughs> Lest you think, you're like, man, NL's woke. No, I'm just like not a Tim Burton Batman villain. You know, I'm, I, I have self-interest to some extent at the very least. That's the dream, right? Everybody in, in this city is waiting for, like, the property crash. Except for people that already own a home, but... And then you're like, yeah, because the property crash means it's going to be easier for everyone to live here, right? And then you talk to them a little bit more and you're like, no, it's because you want to buy, like... You want to get yourself started on what's been the deal of the century for the people that lived you know, that started buying here in 1970. I feel that. I understand. World's in a weird place for that. I was uh, I was talking to someone from London. They told me that it's just like a fork, and we're getting into some real stuff, I guess, to some extent. You know, talk about the grocery store. I haven't been to the grocery store since the last anecdote about the grocery store. Um, they were telling me that, like, in London, you know, you, you just are never under the guise that you're ever going to own a house. Like, people just rent for their entire lives. That's, it seems so foreign to the North American ethos, which is like, you know, you got to track for your life. You go to elementary school, you, middle school, high school, probably college, get a job, get married, have a, have a kid buy a house are usually like close together I don't know what order they're supposed to go and it's more like you know when you're watching the Star Wars movies those are two that you can mix up if you want you know you don't have to watch them in machete order if you want to watch them in chronological or you want to watch them in release order that's fine it's not that big of a deal so it's like a, it's an interruption of the so-called North American plan but I think we're getting there at least here so, we could teleport out, but it's like, we're golden. This run is not a hundred out of ten, but it's really solid. Especially because we know we have a great excuse to not fight the hush. Like a great and viable excuse. This isn't your power going out. This is like, hey, you know, a family member is sick. Oh, you spooked me. The weather today is gorgeous. It is a little hot. But not hot enough to be like, I don't want to be outside. Uh, do you think outside is hot? I think that you should not wear, like, a cardigan. And you could choose between shorts or pants at your own discretion. That's my opinion on today's weather. You're welcome. It's sunny, too, so bring your sunglasses. I wish the weather was described like that on a real basis. You know, if, if they just described it as to what would you... I, like, I would rather hear what the weather person wore <laughs> on their way to work this morning. Woke up this morning, it was real sunny, put on some sunglasses and a tilly hat, came to work in my cargo shorts. Back to you! It's like that plus is it going to rain later are the only two things I need to know. Like, the weather should be like a... It should be like a yes or no. Do I need a sweater? No, no sweater, no rain. All right. See you outside on the bike path. Sweater and rain? Mm, maybe I'll take today off. Play some NHL 2018. Where you get into the tough spot is sweater, no rain. You know? You know oh, okay, I don't know. I'm going to have to think about that. So, again, we're skipping that. I always, The weird thing about being... Living in Canada is that people here, uh, well, I mean, Vancouver is so warm. It's incredibly mild compared to the rest of Canada. It gets cold by its own standards, but the rest of Canada laughs at you. But I always see people here, and I they have to be from out of town. There's no explanation. Because it's June. It's like one of the nicest months. It might be the nicest month of the year right now. You know, July and August, sometimes they can get a little too hot, and oftentimes the entire northern half of the province is on fire, so it's, you know, no joke. This isn't like a ha-ha-ha, it smells like barbecue when you go outside. This is like, you go outside for half an hour, and you're like, my, like, I'm lightheaded. Because the province is on fire. But I see people, and there's a huge, like, bike renting scene. <laughs> you're like, what is bike renting? No. Bike renting. 
Why is he saying it like that? Bicycle rental organizations. So I see all these like proprietary bicycles that are like, you know, the name of the place that rented them. And the people riding them are wearing winter coats and it's like 24 degrees Celsius and the sun is beating down on you. It's noon. And I'm like, man, you got some bunk information. <laughs> You must have talked to somebody that was like, I went to Edmonton in December and it was freezing. And now you're like, Vancouver in June? How different could it be? A lot different. A hundred percent different is the real answer. You do not need a winter coat here. You don't even, you need like a windbreaker. But the windbreaker isn't even to break the wind. But dum bum -ch. The windbreaker is just so you fit in with all the people wearing their athletic wear out here and they go, hey, Arcteryx. Oh, Lululemon. I see how it is. Are we going to fight Mega Stan immediately? Dude, I love Eden's Blessing. I feel like we had to skip it the last time we saw it, because we did. I would like to take a brief moment to look for something useful. Obviously, Awaz is not it. Ace of Hearts is just horrible here. I want like a Hermit card is not it. Magician is okay. So we will roll that, and then um, just get the rest of these trash cards out of here. I want to have like two good cards to use against Mega Satan, because Mega Satan is also a very annoying, uh oh, a very annoying fight with Cursed Eye. That's not a particularly like open and shut case. I'm just gonna blow it up. I, I can never remember, and now we know. I can never remember if Temperance gives you, uh, or if Blood Bank gives you a guaranteed item when you blow it up on the chest. I still will never remember it, even though we just saw it right there. Dude, I was why I keep talking, there's like five things I've been talking about in Isaac videos this month. But please, if you have not been watching The Staircase and you're at all interested in true crime dramas, it's so actually great. It's so much better than Making a Murder, if, if you've seen that. Making a Murder, fantastic. Absolutely, and you know, maybe a little editorialized, but that's fine. You, That's like the appetizer, and the staircase is like, it's the most mature movie I've ever seen. There's no narration in the whole movie. The entire thing is just lawyers talking, and it's amazing. It's so engaging. I feel like every Isaac episode now contains like a new revelation about the last episode of The Staircase that I watched. Did you know that in court, you can choose not to provide a defense when you're at trial? I was losing my mind. I was watching the prosecution run the case against this guy. The lawyers have a little round table with one another. They seem like great lawyers. They were going, first off, should we even run a defense or should we just let the jury run now? You could do that? By the way, don't say of course. This is like, I thought you at least had to like, I mean, why wouldn't you, I guess, was what my reaction was. But they're like, hey, the prosecution kind of bungled it. Maybe we should just be like, we rest our case without ever saying anything. It's like a chess match, dude. I had no idea. I gotta watch more movies or more uh, documentaries like this. Because the only, prior to this, like my knowledge of courtroom drama, especially in the U.S., basically when, you know, John Grisham, you're losing me my jury! I really, this is like, I've had this idea in my head for a while, and again, ideas, I give them away freely. I thought it would be really cool if there was like, uh, and not everybody, in fact, I think almost nobody's going to agree with me here. I would love to see a legal-themed RPG, and I know you're going to say Ace Attorney. I don't mean like Ace Attorney. Ace Attorney is fine. I'm going to level with you. I don't know if we're going to be able to beat Mega Satan, so I'm just going to start and we'll go up against this guy and see how it goes. I mean like a game where you have like a lawyer who has stats and you know, you have a case and you, and you prepare for it like almost in the Witcher style where you do investigate, like a Telltale style investigation section. And then during the trial itself, I don't know, maybe you play cards from your hand or something like that. Like, I have an objection card because they've been, they played something that has a risk of leading the witness and, you know. Again, way beyond my skill set. I just thought it would be a cool theme for a game. Not something I would necessarily expect to sell 55 million copies. Um, but it's kind of like, it's an aspect of 
You don't, you don't see too many games like that, you know, is what I'm trying to get at, I suppose. Eh. I think My Little Unicorn is probably better for the boss than Black Hole. I don't know. I, I just don't feel like it's right to try to fight Mega Satan on this one, to be honest. If we had gotten... Like, I'm not trying to blame the game. Yeah, I think I'm... Don't hate me because I'm, cause I'm right here. Okay, I've played this game for... Uh, you know, I'll, I'll meet you halfway. I've played it for 2,600 hours. I think I have a an instinct and my instinct is telling me that we'd probably die if we fought Mega Satan. So I'm gonna call this one a victory. I was really I gave this floor the old college try to see if we get some new items. Didn't exist. Life goes on. New cards even would be fine. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did click the like button, helps a great deal. Of course subscribe if you want to see more in the future for now thanks for watching I will see you next time.